So the Girls' Education Initiative of Ghana, or GIG for very short, is the organization, an organization that supports about, well, 12 girls between the Greater Accra and the Ashanti regions. And as you said, we started formally in 2013, but informally, I had been coming, I'm Ghanaian by birth, and I had been coming back and forth since my family left Ghana in 95, in 2006. And we came for personal reasons. I was in a car accident in 2003, and then came back just to see my family and maybe try some traditional treatments to see if it could be of help to some of the injuries that I had um, I had after the accident. And so I was here for about seven months because I tried some herbal medicine and it was promising and it would look like it was going to help with my stroke. And so I decided to, initially we were gonna be here for about two months and then we saw some kind of promise that the treatments was going to work. So I decided to stay for seven months. I, um, I postponed going to undergrad for about a semester. I was even willing to do it for a year just to see if the treatment would work. And then in the time, um, I felt like I'm not just gonna sit here and try, like dwell on the fact that I'm trying to get treatment. So I started volunteering in the school as uh, first grade class one teacher, first grade class one teacher in Kumasi. And I felt as though there was some kind of connection for me within the education space. And it always goes back to the fact that my family, when we were leaving Ghana, my mom won the visa lotto in 95. And when we were leaving, my sister and I had no idea why we were leaving. And we were told that we would get a better education outside of Ghana. And that's debatable, but <laughs> we were told that we would get a better education outside of Ghana. And so the fact that I came back here and reconnected with education and started teaching in the school, kind of, it was like education, education, education in my face. And then um, to go back a little bit, 2003, when my car accident happened, um, I was pronounced dead and then everything just kind of um, came to a halt. But the, when I woke up from my coma and everything, the thing that became what was keeping me going was the fact that I had classmates and people from my school, teachers, administration, everybody from the school was coming on a regular basis to come and see me. And then I wanted to graduate from school. I was in my junior year. And then to think that, yeah, to think that almost dying was gonna stop me from graduating was not something that I was gonna let happen. Challenging is an understatement. I would say challenging, frustrating, but aside from all the negative things, the everyday, day-to-day -day administrative things that I and the team have to deal with, um, I think, well, I know that it's been, it's been a good experience for us, and that's true. It's been good and bad. Um, good because these girls now know that um, they have a place or an institution that is there for them and will be looking out for them no matter what, at least until they're done with senior high school. And then I'm sure as the, when the time comes, we'd be able to also support them somehow with their higher education. We all know Ghana, there's a lot of bureaucracy. You wanna get one little thing signed. It takes a million people to just get that done. And fundraising is, <clears throat> is not something, it's not sexy in Ghana to really go and fundraise for a charity because there are so many charities out there. There are a lot of people also who need help and the way our families are structured here in Ghana is like, somebody told me this, I think two years ago when we were doing our launch and I was trying to get in people, to invite people to come. I gave an invitation card to this gentleman and he said, so you want me to come to an event run by an organization that supports students, kids who are not my child or my nephew or my niece, so I could give you money to support some other person's child. And so that's the way things run in Ghana. We think about our immediate families, our nuclear families, and then we're all supporting extended families, our brother's cousin or somebody, right? And so it's really difficult for people to feel like, okay, 
there's a charity and interest group that I want to support. And so it's made it a little bit more, even more difficult to work in Ghana. Um, I love music. When the time, when I have the time, I like to go listen to music. Um, for Christmas, my birthday is January 2nd. And so my, my mom gave me a, me a present. All I wanted was like to get away. I kept saying, I need to get away, I need to get away. But they wouldn't let me because clearly birthdays and holidays are for family. So my mom took me and my sister to go listen to Lumba in Kumasi. And so I love music. That's like my most recent memory of something, yeah. Where I want to see it is, we have one class of students. We want to graduate them into senior high school by 2017, and all of them will be enrolled in senior high school by then, and then hopefully bring in a second class of students who we'll be starting with at junior high school. And then at every three years, we graduate each class to the next stage. So I see us becoming at the micro level, helping a class two group of students, a class three, and then hopefully with time, expanding into another region. I was announced Vlisco ambassador April of 2015, and we're almost in April of 2016. So it's been, I think it's been transformational because I came into Ghana, even though I was here and like trying to do what is good for me and my organization, no one really knew about who I am, but the Blisco platform has been able to highlight me and the organization to a length that otherwise I think it would have, we would have gone there, but it would have taken maybe three more years, five more years for us to get there. So it's been good for me personally and for my organization. It's not the end of the world, number one, yeah. I think there's nothing in the world that well, there are some things in the world that might make you feel like it's the end of the world, but there's really nothing that I could think of that should make you want to give up anything that you're passionate about. So I would tell this young girl that if you're determined, then you should go for it. We have been working with 12 girls for the last two years, and we see a lot of improvements in their academics, their leadership potential, and just their overall well-being and I believe that if you invest in a GIG student you're investing in the well-being of the nation so if you're watching this right now please find it somewhere in your heart to sponsor one of our girls thank you very much hi my name is Elizabeth Patterson and I'm a game changer <laughs>